Hey everybody, Marcus Crawford here with the Idaho Quadcopter Channel. Hey, uh, we've got some interesting news this morning. Uh, the FAA gave us a press release uh, about uh, the remote ID regulation for SUAS, uh, Small Unmanned Aircraft Systems. Uh, they extended the remote ID rule, or the enforcement, I should say that, they extended the enforcement of the remote ID rule for six months. So now you have until March 16th, 2024 to comply. Uh, let me read their statement for you and we'll just get it. Uh, there, there is some nuance there. There are some things that we need to pay attention to. Uh, so I'm just going to read it for you so you'll have it here. And uh, I'll also put a link to the FAA webpage in the description below. That, that has their statement. Uh, but it's dated uh, September 13th, 2023. Uh, drone pilots who are unable to comply with the broadcast requirement of the remote ID rule will now have until March 16th, 2024 to equip their aircraft. After that date, operators could face fines and suspension or revocation of their pilot certificates. In making this decision, the FAA recognizes the unanticipated issues that some operators are experiencing finding some remote identification broadcast modules. Drone pilots can meet this deadline by purchasing a standard remote ID equipped drone from a manufacturer or purchasing a remote ID broadcast module which can be affixed to exist existing drones that do not have remote ID equipment. Remote ID acts like a digital license plate that will help the FAA, law enforcement, and other federal agencies find the control station when a drone appears to be flying in an unsafe manner or where it is not allowed to fly. So there's some nuance in this statement that I think is important. So one of the things that I've been saying all along is of course the FAA would likely delay the rule because of the inability to have enough remote ID modules manufactured or availability or even the price point, right? Uh, so the ones that I've seen are pretty expensive and what the, the net effect is that because of their lack of availability, you would essentially force a lot of people into non-compliance. Well, of course they didn't want to do that, uh, but it, it says you got to look at the wording. It says drone pilots who are unable to comply. So we're not all of us are unable to comply. If you have a standard remote ID drone like the uh, D DJI Air 3 and you know all the recent DJI drones all have standard remote ID including the recent Autel drones etc. Tons of other ones. You can look on the FAA's website to find that list. You're on September 16th, I believe that they're saying you're expected to be broadcasting remote ID. Uh, and now, if you have a drone uh, like this uh, Hubson Ace Pro that does not broadcast remote ID, uh, then nobody's going to enforce that rule until uh, March 16th of 2024. So the other th important thing that they're saying in this statement is uh, they're talking about it how it acts like a digital license plate and what it allows uh, law enforcement to do and so what they're saying is they want to be able to find the control station when a drone appears to be flying in an unsafe manner or where it's not allowed to fly so by that I, I don't think anybody if you're flying at your local park and you know not doing anything dumb nobody is going to be searching for whether you are broadcasting remote ID or not or if you're out in the middle of nowhere uh, like I often fly uh, yeah you don't expect FAA agent to be sneaking up behind you wanting to know whether you're broadcasting remote ID what they're trying to do is find people that are you know we've, we've all read the stories about people flying over sporting events and so forth uh, yeah, they want to be able to see where the control station is and, and figure out what those guys are doing. Uh, we've all heard stories about uh, people using drones to drop contraband into prisons and things like that. Yeah, they want remote ID so they can identify where that, uh, where that drone is at and, uh, and take care of it. So 
that's what it's all about. And uh, I don't think uh, remote ID on the whole, it, it's just, it's not as intrusive as we would, many people would want you to believe. Uh, the, the, the one aspect of it that I think all of us can take, have taken a little bit of an issue with is the drone apps where just a, the general public can take an app and they can see where you're standing with the drone station. Well, a couple of things there. We know that that doesn't work with iPhones and that's about half the phones out there. Uh, so it does work with, with other phones and hopefully that's something they can address after a while. But here, the, here's the other flip side of that coin. 90% of the people out there are not even going to know that an app like that even exists. So I, I just don't think it's going to be as big of a worry as, as what we think it is. The other thing that I want to say is, listen, Congress mandated the FAA to come up with a way to track small UAS. So they have to do it. And if this, this version of Remote ID is relatively benign. It, it's it's easy to comply with. It's not uh, it, it's not particularly intrusive, as opposed to some of the other things that they could have done, uh, where you have to have a network connection to fly your drone. Now, wouldn't that be something? You know, as they when they were initially talking about remote ID, they were saying you would have to have a, a network connection, and then you, as the pilot, would have to subscribe to a service and your drone wouldn't even take off uh, unless you had that network connection. Well, you know, that would be, well, I'll, I won't go into a bunch of down into the weeds with that, but that would be intrusive, right? And that would be costly and, and that's not something we'd want to see. So what I'd want to see is that let's just make this version of Remote ID work and our hobby will continue and we'll just continue having fun with our drones. So once this version of Remote ID is in full effect and it seems to be working smoothly and does what the FAA needs it to do, uh, could we get some positive things like extended visual line of sight operations for our drones? Those things are possible. So for my part, I'm going to do my best to make this version of Remote ID work. Uh, that way we won't have to worry about anything more restrictive uh, coming down the road later on. Let's just continue to fly our drones and have fun and uh, enjoy our hobby. Uh, or if you're a Part 107 pilot, enjoy what you're doing uh, and making a living. So that's about it. This is Marcus Crawford with the Idaho Quadcopter Channel out. And if you like this kind of content, please consider subscribing to my channel. Most of all, I appreciate you taking the time to look at this video, and of course, we'll see you on the next one. Uh, remote ID, it's not the end of the world. Again, I will put a link in the description down below to the FAA statement that they put out today uh, on remote ID.